All right, it's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the Credit Repair Shop.com. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Letitia James, Attorney General for New York. They must be watching my videos or they must be uh, looking at my summons responses that I've done for clients in New York because I'm about to tell you some good information about New York, but what this will also do. So don't think just because it happened in New York, it's not going to benefit you where you're at because actually what they're making debt collectors do when they're trying to sue people or when they're even just stating that they're coming after you for debt is the same things that I've always talked about on this channel. But now here is validation from the Attorney General of, of New York, Letitia James. So, but, but before I get into that, please hear me out. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Last month, I was embarrassed. Uh, there wasn't as many people subscribing to the channel as they should have been, but I think I know why, because I didn't ask for it. It's crazy. You get what you ask for, and I didn't ask people to subscribe to the uh, channel. I usually place that in text at the top. Uh, when I've done that, people subscribe. When I didn't do it and forgot to tell people, people just watched the video and, and took off. But before we get to this document here, and I'm going to put the link to it, but please hear me out. Because I'm also making the videos about the buying uh, stuff with a 1099A, the so-called secret bank account, the so-called payment coupon, all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that part of it right now in this video. So don't worry about that. It, you know, I, people didn't uh, try a whole bunch of things and call me a whole bunch of stuff over that, which I'm going to be getting to that in another video uh, soon. Not on what they call me, because I don't care about that, on what we have done to be able to help people who fail for that stuff where the IRS is coming after. But I saw, I, I do my research and I watch the videos. And I, I one thing that I'm, that, that I see a lot on those videos. And I saw one before I got to this video when I was doing my research. And the person is gonna say, uh, what, a, you know, we're paying the bank. We go get a loan, we pay the bank back. And what are we getting? Like they're, 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 they're so ungrateful. These are the types of types of people who are never grateful for anything. Like they're like, what services did we get? What did we get for getting the loan? That, why are we paying them back? And it's like, did you use the credit card to buy things? Did you uh, get a mortgage loan to buy your house? Did you get a loan to start a business? Did you get a loan to buy an RV? One couple bought an RV. Did you get a loan, uh, use your credit card to buy a computer? So what are you talking about that you you don't you didn't get anything? What are you getting for, for letting them do, and let's just say what, I'm going to tell you what they said, for letting them get the money out of your secret bank account to get you whatever you're getting. These people are so ungrateful. The thing you want to know what what one of the things that I learned from uh, some of my clients. I have a, a large number of clients that are from Africa, that are from uh, uh, Dubai, uh, that are from uh, Palestine, that are from uh, Russia. Uh, all these different, all of these different countries. Uh, Jordan, uh, uh, Kuwait, like that, that I do business with. And the number one thing that they'll be telling me, I won't say number one, but one of the things that they tell me and that sticks with me to this day. And the reason why they brought it up to me was because they see people that from their culture that have been in the United States for a long period of time. And they, this is what they say. They say that people are blind to the opportunities that are here in America, that the people who have been here the longest 
the large majority of people don't appreciate nothing. And I'm not going to curse on here because I don't want to get the video banned, but I surely feel like cussing right now or cursing, whatever you want to do. Because people don't appreciate it. And I don't know what has to be revealed to an individual that is living in the comfort of a home that has the, the ability to go and work, start a business, work for a company, get paid, manage your expenses, pay your bills, drive a nice car, make millions of dollars. Some make billions of dollars from ideas. In other countries, some people, when I, my friends, when I talk to them, they, you can't even have an idea over there unless you were born in a certain class to be able to do something. All right, so let's get to the, uh, after my rant there, let's get to Letitia James here. You see it right here, it said Letitia James. And this is the uh, compliant, th this was March 23rd, but it's actually going into, uh, uh, it, well, it went into, to, uh, it changed over. April 7, 2022. So here we go. Compliance with New York Consumer Credit Fairness Act. So they, they have a whole new Fairness Act and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau Regulation F. So as you may know, this is a letter that she sent for, to, to the, uh, it says the major debt collection operations in the state of New York. Now, right here, right here, right here, when you, you remember what I, I've, I've said in the past is that you have to be licensed to do business as a debt collector in your in the state that you're trying to collect uh, from people from. One of the biggest violations that debt collectors do right now is that they're not even licensed to even do business in the state that they're trying to collect from. You see it a lot with the smaller debt collection companies. But this is why she said major debt collection operating in New York State, because they have a list of them. The state has a list because they have to be uh, have to get a license. As you may know, there has been significant developments at the state and federal level to enhance protections for consumers facing debt collections. New York recently adopted the Consumer Credit Fairness Act, Chapter 593 of the laws of 2021 here, here, uh, hereafter CCFA, regulating lawsuits from debt collectors as well as general business law 601-B, chapter 461 of the laws of, 20, of 2021, regulating debt, collect, debt collector communications with disabled consumers at the federal level new rules promulgate by Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Okay, we are sending you this letter to confirm that you are aware of the obligations and that you are taking appropriate steps to comply with the new regulations. One of the most significant changes is the start, is, is that starting in April 7, 2022, the statute of limitations on consumer debt collection actions in New York will be reduced to three years. Reduced to three years. Hold on one second. I just wanted to grab this here. Uh, hold on one second. I just want to grab this. Uh, let's see. So where were they at? I mean, I just didn't have this in my memory. So they were at six years, six years across the board. Six years, six years. So they dropped it to three years. Congratulations, New York. All right. So that's the first thing, reducing it. And then it says a period of time that cannot be extended by partial payments made after the statute of limitations has expired. So they will not even allow the debt to be reset. You know what, what, what happened with people? It's like they'll make a small payment because they don't want to mess up their credit. They don't want to get in trouble with their job. It's like I, my, maybe my spouse, I, I, I don't want to have no bad credit. We're getting... Uh, we're going to get, you know, I promised her or I promised him or you're engaged and it's like, I don't want to, 
I'd rather just pay it and get it out of the way or pay something on it. Well, they cannot reset the debt, uh, which is a very good thing because this that's one of the things that happens to a lot of people is that they would end up paying a small payment and it would reset the statute of limitations. And then let's go right here. Because validation notices must conspicuously disclose on their face if the debt is time barred. I wish, I wish they would not have used time barred, even though in right here they use statute of limitations and then they flip it over here to time barred. Letitia, change that to time barred slash statute of limitations because what they're saying is that on the letter, it must disclose if the debt is time barred and they're stating the law on that i wish they would change that to say statute of limitations because you know when you get that letter and it says hey uh hey uh steve that you know we're trying to collect that debt on you but it's past the statute of limitations how does that you know what what do you think uh steve would do with that and then what you send steve another letter and you say hey Steve, we're trying to collect this debt from you, but it's past the time barred period. It's like, what the hell? What do you mean by time barred? Someone who doesn't take the time to even look it up, who doesn't even look it up, can say, hey, I, I have a period of time to pay it. I mean, you never know what's going on in someone's mind. Never make the assumption that people understand a single word uh the way that you're implying it to be you to be the meaning of that word it could be used and the person who is getting that word could hear it a different way and think of it another way uh i think an attorney the other day uh sent me uh uh a youtube comment and he said well you know that when they said that the person that it wasn't a literal on like it wasn't a they didn't mean it literally like you don't have the uh uh education or whatever i forgot what it had said but it was a response to a court summons and they said that you don't that this person doesn't have the capability to argue and it had a a a, a court ruling and he had said that hey they didn't mean that literally like you don't have you know, you, you don't have a competent, that's what it was, wasn't competent enough to do it. I know that they didn't mean it literally, but what does that individual who is being sued, who is under a lot of stress, pressure, uh, emotions are running all over the place, saying that to them and saying that to someone else on the street who is not experiencing that, they can think, I am competent. The other person that is under stress, that is emotionally drained, upset, having to go to court and get in front of people not used to that stuff, and they hear a word like that, it brings them down. Trust me, it brings them down. So now let's continue. Debt collectors must ensure that uh, validation notices for debt that has become time barred on April 7, 2022, include the disclosure if notice is likely to be received after that date. In addition, debt collectors currently collecting debts that were not but will become time barred on April 7, 2022, must advise, debt, must advise debtors of that fact on or before April 7, 2022. It is a violation of the SFDCPA for a debt collector to bring or threaten to bring legal, legal action, whether it, um, implicitly or Im implicitly. So that means that, you see, this is the other thing. They could say they're gonna sue you, but they don't really mean they're gonna sue you. So what they're doing is they're taking the term for both. So here, let's, let's look it up real quick, hold on. Okay, so I went ahead and went to Google again so we can break those down. So we got the two, whether explicitly or implicitly. So here we go, one right here. What does stated explicitly, uh, 
something that is explicit is expressed or shown clearly and open without any attempt to hide anything. And then here, implied rather than expressly stated, implicated, <coughs> excuse me, in, in uh, agreement, unquestioning or unreserved, unconditional, implicit trust, implicit obedience, implicit confidence, potentially. So, <coughs> excuse me. So basically what they're stating is that with one way you're um, you're clearly stating everything, and in another way <clears throat> you're in a way you're hiding what you're you're stating. Like you don't uh, you you don't you know you don't really say it the way that it needs to be said. So against the consumer to collect a time bar debt. So. One way they're telling you up front, another way they're not telling you up front. That'll be the easiest way for you to understand it. In addition, to ensure that consumers understand the nature of the debt that is claimed they owe, uh, New York has expanded the disclosure requirements by debt collectors proceeding the state, proceeding in state court. After May 7, 2022, complaints in consumer debt lawsuits must utilize a debt salt and include more details regarding the debt chain of ownership. I've talked about that. Including attachments, attaching the contract on which the debt was ultimately based. We talked about that. In addition, the notice, uh, in addition, the notice debt collectors must prove to the clerk of courts to send on to consumers when filing lawsuits filing suit is more comprehensive than notice previously required under the court ruling. Debt collectors must also give the clerk of court's new form notice to send to consumers when filing for summary judgment. And then we go here, regulation F sets for further requirements applicable primary, primarily to debt collection activities prior to litigation. For example, it limits communications with the consumer no more than seven times in seven days to prohibit collection calls between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. It also imposes certain obligations designed to ensure that consumers are aware of the nature of the alleged, and we talk about that alleged, and to facilitate consumers' ability to dispute debt and avoid adverse actions. Among other things, it requires debt collectors to provide detailed information about debt, to make initial uh, initial contract contact with the consumer before reporting the debt to consumer reporting agencies and to suspend contracts between the time consumers dis, uh, dispute their uh, dispute their debt or request uh, information about the original uh, uh, creditor and supply and requested information. So here we always talk about this that we do this in the court summary response. But this is what we also do in the debt validation, and it has suspend contract between the time consumers dispute. So it, this is something that I talked about in the last video too. When you dispute a debt, it's going to go into this process that takes 90 days. And some of the smaller debt collectors didn't follow this rule, but a lot of the larger debt collectors will follow this rule. And what that does is they can't do anything. They have to just get you the information. But what what I started seeing uh, or what debt collectors would usually do is let that 90 day period go away and then they would just start the process over again. They wouldn't send the documents or they would just send a couple of statements. They didn't send you everything that you wanted. They want, they're just trying to wait that 90 day period out and then they would note it. So they followed the rules of the law, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and then they would just move forward with trying to collect the debt on people. So they're not even going to let them do that in this state, they're going to require that they get those documents to people. Regulation F is com compl complemented by New York General Business Law 601-B, which requires debt collectors in each initial communications clearly and conspicuously 
disclose to the debtor that each communication can be provided as an alternative reasonable accommodation, such as large print, what is it? Uh, bra oh, Braille, man. Uh, audio, audio compact disc or other means collected by the debt collector. Not sure. Audio compact disc. Not sure about that. Uh, request for information pursuant to pursuant to New York Executive Laws 6312 and General Business Law Article 22-8 and 22-H. We write to request information concerning your compliance. So they're just wanting to make sure that they do comply. Uh, let's go right here. Let's look. Uh, Regulation F. So, so they want what they want them to do is they want them to write back with their policy, and uh, you know the state number one the state that they're going to follow these, and then that they want them to write back and and uh, and you know make sure that they are going to follow this and follow this new procedure, which is a three year. The big the big takeaway from this the three year statute of limitations. That they have to tell people about the time bar. And I've always stated that they, when they call people, they would say time bar, but people get mixed up. They, if they were to say statute of limitations, they would automatically say, okay, you know, uh, they're not going to be able to come after me because of statute of limitations. Uh, but this is the good, good uh, step three year statute of limitations. They have to prove everything, they have to get information for the original creditor, original contract. This is an A. Letitia James, Attorney General, New York State. Um, this is a, a, a great day uh, for the fight against debt collectors who are buying debt. All right, if you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process, which does what they just talked about in this uh, letter right here. Uh, if you need your credit reports and scores, please go to the website, yorder3scores.com. If you have debt collectors coming after you and you want to stop them before they try to sue you when they're sending you that letter, which they didn't get into stating about the 30-day letter uh, uh, on there, um, uh, but you can grab my three-pack of letters, statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, and cease and desist collection activities letter. Make sure you ask your questions. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you post your comments. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams. President and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.